Hey, this is Yedis Chocolate here and I'm back with another itzy commentary video in which I'll talk about the company's hideous idea of what a promotion is and how it is failing the group once again. I'll also talk about the toxicity of Mitsiview, so if you find such topics interesting, make sure you subscribe to my channel and stick around for more videos like these. And now, let's dive into JYP's idea of a good comeback promotion. Starting off with how a comeback schedule normally is for a JYP group. Just like a lot of other companies, JYP gives about a month between the review of the comeback and the album release date. Compared to the West where that takes about 2, 3 or even 4 months, that's quite a short amount of time. This is to prove how fast of a world the K-pop industry is. So to build hype quickly, JRP and other companies have all of those concept reviews, album packaging and tracklist spoilers and such. And it normally builds high anticipation amongst fans and non-fans as news and videos keep on trending every day on social media. This normally works for JRP groups. Just look at how everyone was constantly on their toes and dying of excitement as every day or every other day there was news coming about Stray Kids and Mix and Twice in their recent comebacks. So then, what is the reason behind the silence around Ipsy's Q My Doubt comeback? The fact that there is a month and a half of a wait between the comeback review and the album release. That in itself is a setup for a failure in such a rapid industry. Not that there isn't a way of making it work, but JYP's ideas keep getting worse. Ok great, we have a pre-release track, that's cool. But then we got zero trailers and no promotion for it whatsoever, besides a few TikToks two weeks later. Let me also mention how none of the concept photos and clips or anything regarding the comeback has been posted on their Instagram feed. That's their most followed social. So in what world did JYP think that it's a great strategy to not post anything there? Even though Mitsis are excited and looking forward to the comeback, the lack of good promotion isn't the way to get everyone 100% hyped for it. It makes me sad because you can see how a huge amount of effort from the girls is going to waste just because JYP strategies make no sense. How can we have all of those stunning concept photos and clips and then the beautiful and meaningful song Bet On Me and do nothing with them? Should I remind you that Bet On Me isn't even on Spotify? By now it maybe would have gotten a lot of attention on there, but I guess we'll never know. The next big mistake JYP made was to only include two members in the album spoiler. Like hello, Itzy has five members. And while the spoiler does a great job of showcasing Itzy's biggest charm, dancing, I can't help but hate the company for excluding Leah, Cherung and Yuna. I'm suspecting that having only Yeji and Yujin in it, the company is hinting towards unit activities. But still, this is Itzy's spoiler for the album. It should have included all members. That's one of too many reasons as to why Itzy's members got a lot of hate recently. And the worst part is that the people spreading the hate were actually Mitsis. Here comes my second topic of today's video. The toxicity of Mitsi. As you probably know, it's normal for a K-pop fan to have a bias or a bias wrecker in the group. That totally doesn't mean that they love the other members any less. The problematic people in every fandom though have always been the solo stands. They exist in sweet old Mitsi view as well. If you're asking me though, I wouldn't call those solo fans Mitsi, even though they always claim that they are. So you could imagine the war that happened between people in the fandom. Sarangs were hating on Yeji for being the center and not Ryujin, and then Blackheart started throwing hate on Ryujin for whatever reason. When the album spoiler dropped, fans had mixed feelings. While we are happy that Yeji and Ryujin get to shine, we can't help but feel bad about the other three not getting the spotlight they deserve. While these are normal complaints and concerns, solo fans again took it too far. Leah's, Cherung's and Yuna's solo fans were fighting with Mitzi as if there's no tomorrow. You can share your opinion without disregarding the other members or dissing the other fans and complaining 24-7 to everyone that your bias is better. Complain has always been a toxic trait of Mitzi's. You can clearly see it in this comeback as well. People are already calling Cake a flop and pointing out besides that they think should have been title tracks. The same thing has been happening since Guess Who era and I'm so tired of it. 
Yes, Psychic Lover is built off of very trendy sounds and melodies. Qshot would also make a trendy audio on TikTok, but if you've paid close attention, it's it doesn't like following trends. The message they've been trying to spread this whole time has been to be tala tala, to be different. So yeah, Cake would have been the trendiest song a few years ago, but why this it now? First of all, we've only heard a 20 second snippet of it, and second of all, Black Eyed Pilsung knows their stuff. And so far, the production seems incredible. I would understand if you say that you don't like it, but please don't go as far as some fans and say that the producers did a bad job and make jokes about how they only agreed to work on it just for the money or how Itzy doesn't learn from their mistakes and that they work so hard for nothing. At this point, I feel like people are saying they hate it just because it's Itzy. Had any other group, and specifically the newer 4th generation girl groups, released Cake, everyone would be praising it. But no, it's Itzy, so we're just gonna hate on everything and everyone. This fandom could be the worst sometimes. And the toxicity, along with JYP's managing, is the reason I think Itzy's comeback won't do as well as it could. Just today, they released the first documentary out of three, and it already disappointed me. It's been hours, and still no subtitles are available. That's so weird to me. Obviously, the game for this comeback is up. From the concept photos to the quality of the music, it also looks like we're finally gonna be getting the content we've been begging for for so long. But then again, I can also see the many gaps the company lets slide. For example, the cover of the limited edition has only Eugene, Leah and Yuna on it, we're continuing to see a lack of good promo on social media, now the unavailable subtitles. So conclusion is that both the company and the fans are slowly but surely leading Itzy up to a failure once again. I want to leave off on a good note though and say that I do think that this is by far their best comeback. The cohesiveness of the song's production and mixing, and the many colors we'll most likely see in the melodies and the lyrics and also the choreographies are making me really look forward to this mature Itzy. And I hope you do too! Please share your opinions in the comments, do you agree, do you not? And I hope to see you guys next time! Bye!